got Gucci on my body, but it's true, that's on my mind You know I think about you all the time I'm pretty stoked right now because, uh I've got a superstar sitting next to me. You guys may know her as Baby Ariel. I know her as my new best friend. Oh, hello. Thank oh, you. Hey. Thank you. Hi, best friend. <laughs> We're just planning our slumber party here at the Dream Hotel. Yeah, we are. Um, so we are so excited to have you on here because the main goal of our show is to interview people who can inspire through their own successes. And mm -hmm. you have had a lot of success. Oh, thank you so much. <laughs> and you're so young. Thank you. Um, you're on the Kylie Jenner track. Like, oh my goodness. as far as like, you're already mentioned in Forbes and you're younger than Kylie was when she got mentioned in Forbes. That, I'm just doing some math. I'm, thank you. <laughs> I love Kylie Jenner so much. Who doesn't? So to like, to, that, that was, thank you. I'm just saying you're on that mogul path. I feel it. Thank you. I appreciate it. Um, for people who may not know, you got your start on a I'm, tiny little app. A tiny little, just a little thing. It's, it was Musical.ly, now it's called TikTok. Mm -hmm. So I started about three years ago making lip sync videos of myself. It was the summer going into ninth grade. And um, yeah, I took music, I took 15 seconds of songs, started making these lip syncing videos using hand motions and facial expressions. And people really liked the way I was making my videos. And I started to gain a following on Musical.ly slash TikTok. Um, and yeah, from there really began the journey of social media and transitioning into doing, you know, longer videos and also, you know, bringing my acting and my singing in the picture as well. Which a lot of big things coming out that we will tell you guys about. But let's <laughs> go back to that day in ninth grade. Yeah, that day. That, that exact day. You just had your after school snack. Yes. What, what were you... So this app comes out. Did you know that it was going to be as big as it was when you first downloaded it? No. So really what happened was I was, okay, from this the summer that I was going into ninth grade, my house got a flood randomly. I don't, a pipe broke under, I don't know what it was. And so we moved into our grandparents' house. And my brother and I spent tons of time at my grandparents' house as they were like fixing my house. It was a summer of being at my grandparents' house with my brother. And we were on our phones a lot. And we found this app, like randomly, we're like, oh my God, this is so cool. It's fun, it's different, let's do this. And we just really dove into it, not knowing what it would become at all. You what know? it would become, and also what it would do for <laughs> you, like, you know? <laughs> yeah, it's I mean, not just the app blew up. It's not like the app blew up and you were like still at grandma's. <laughs> Right. <laughs> Thank you. No, I mean, it's true. So do you remember the first one that you did? Yes, the first one. Oh my gosh. I think it was a Nicki Minaj. It was to Nicki Minaj, I'm legit or high school. I forgot what it was, but I remember sitting in my room. No, my, not my room, my parents' room at my grandparents' house on their bed. And it took me like a good three hours, I think, to make this one 15 second clip. But because we were like, you know, at their house, like we had time to just really play and you be had creative. all the time yeah we had time to just do our thing on this app and I was going to spend my time on it and I spent like three hours <laughs> doing that one what is the trick behind getting a good musically like you have it down you've got like <laughs> I've, I got in a, I went through a very dark hole like I just watched my videos. you can watch so you can watch them for hours oh and gosh. your fans make it very easy it's like compilation video on oh my, all those you guys love her <laughs> love you guys thank yeah. you <laughs> so yeah like what's the what's the trick is it just do you have to take that much time on each one or did you get to the point where it was like you could do yeah I mean now I do them quicker for sure but I don't know I guess you know when it comes to like my whole family like my mom did theater her whole life so it was always you know acting and using facial looks. I've always wanted to act since I was little and sing you know and use my emotions for art and this was just another form of putting all those things that I like to do into this video so I would just use my facial expressions I would use the music based on what they were saying in the video I don't know it kind of just like came and, and you I probably didn't think it was that big of a deal you're no. like this is fun and cute and I'm doing it and it's great when did you start to notice like wait a second uh, people are following me and there's not, it's not just like grandma. It's, yeah, I, know. <laughs> I keep bringing grandma into this situation. Hi, <laughs> no, yeah, it was, I want to say actually, surprisingly, the first time somebody came up to me in public and it was actually at Old Navy with my grandma. 
I remember it like it's yesterday. I was in line to, cause she, I think we were going into ninth grade and I needed polo shirts. No, my brother, sorry, was going into like sixth grade. He needed polo sh- shirts. So we went to Old Navy with my grandma and my brother and we were in line and this girl came up to me and she's like, oh my God, hi, are you Ariel? And I was so confused cause I was like, how does somebody know who I am? And my grandma was even more scared for my life cause she doesn't even, <laughs> she doesn't know what is social media. Yeah. Has, we were all just like really confused. And once we talked it out, I was like, okay, you know me from social media. That's when it was like, whoa, this isn't just, you know, something on my phone. It isn't just numbers, it isn't comments There's through a real screen. People. It's real. Yeah, cause like before you meet someone, it's really just, you know, user number, blah, 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 commented on your picture. But then at least before I ever met somebody in public, you know, and then when you meet them, it's like, oh my God, you're a real person and you really follow me and you like my music leads and everything that I'm doing. And so. you're recognized in a public, that has to be so surreal. It was so weird. <laughs> for the first time. How long was it from that day in Old Navy from the day on the bed in grandma's house? It was <laughs> Like how, how long did it take before somebody recognized you? I want to say like, three months, mom, you're starting their car, three months, right? Three, four months. That's insane. <laughs> That's right? absolutely insane. So four months. Yeah. Okay. Were other people in your school also doing musically or was this something that you kind of just discovered? Yeah. So, um, it was surprisingly, I have known one of my best friends this day, Adi, if you're watching, hi Adi, um, Ari, Ariana, she and I met in sixth grade okay. of middle school. And we went through sixth grade together, seventh grade, eighth grade, we're best friends. And we found this app together, you know, during that summer. And we both started gaining a following at like the same time, which is super weird because we live like right next to each other. We're best friends. Mm -hmm. And for both of us to start this journey together was crazy to me and to both of us. But honestly, like having her, having each other through this whole process, I think me with her and her with me, like to have each other, and to understand each other and somebody who knows who I am as like a real person who also knows what I'm going through and knows the traveling and, under, and it's just on the same path as I am. Mm-hmm. Um, it's really cool to have someone like that. So you talk about the path that you were on in that moment. <clears throat> obviously you didn't think I'm going to be like, I'm going to do musically for the rest of my life. Yeah. This was something that was fun. It was obviously a stepping stone that you didn't even expect it to be. Yeah. Um, what was something that you kind of always knew that you're, you're, you were destined for or a dream of yours. It was, it's definitely still to this day, singing and acting and writing. <clears throat> and when it comes to like music and movies, though, those two things are in TV shows, even those two things are my favorite things in the whole entire world. Like, like I said, like my mom, she has done theater her entire life. So that's one thing that my brother and I would always do with her. Like she has all these monologues in her library at home or her office, her library, she her library in her office at home. <laughs> and we would just pull these monologues and do them, you know? And then my dad, he was in a band he's a musician. He loves music. He plays guitar. So I've been in piano also. So I've been like singing and playing piano since I was like I don't know, five, I don't something like that. I don't, so it's always just been who I am and who my family is and what I wanted to do. Um, so it's just, I don't know, it's the coolest thing that, you know, I started on musically and now I'm able to bring my real true passions forward, if that's the right. Well, yeah, <laughs> I mean, and I think that because of your level of talent, obviously there are people who, you know, can be a vine star or whatever. And they try to transition and they don't naturally have that raw talent that you, Mm -hmm. that you do have. (laughs) And so the transition doesn't work. Yours has stuck and worked and it's because you actually do have talent in these fields. Um, you have a couple music videos that are, have insane views, um, (laughs) which is wild. I don't even, (laughs) and this is your own original music. Yes. So when did the transition start where you were like, okay, I'm going to, and by the way, you do take your music seriously. You're not just doing it as like a spoof music video to get views. Like no. you are on a music journey yes. as well as acting, which we'll also get to Thank so you. many things. See, Thank she's a mogul. <laughs> um, so, so how did you then say, all right, I'm going to get in the studio or do whatever I need to do to really flourish as an artist? It was kind of, I don't know. It's weird. It's one of those things that, it's what I always wanted to do. And it was just about when is the right time to do it? And when is the time that I feel strong enough with my voice and my music and my writing and everything to make the transition and to get into 
the studio, you know? Was school a factor? Cause you're still very young at this point. And I'm sure you were thinking about music. Um, and a lot of times people are forced to choose between the two. How yeah. did you navigate that? So I, okay. So ninth grade, I went to school for a month. I want to say in ninth grade before I realized it just, one, I got, okay, there's two things. One, I got approached to do a tour that was like a month long and I couldn't do the tour and be in school at the same time. And, you know, as a family, we had to sit down and discuss what direction, what do we want to do? And two, I don't know. I just, I, I after I, school was not my place. I love school. It's a great place. Please go to school, get an education. But for some it's like, you need to go, but. <laughs> and you're obviously smart. Otherwise you <laughs> wouldn't be you. able to do these things. I'm sure you're getting it in your own way, your education. I, yeah, like School so doesn't have to be the same for everybody. I, yeah, I decided to just transition into doing online school because, you know, I, re I remember that month long tour, like it's yesterday. And this whole journey to me is my own kind of education. And I'm on my own Absolutely. different kind of path. And I think now it's a great thing that kids are able to choose their own path because not everybody learns in the same way, you know, I know for me, I was in math and I hated math, but I loved to write, you know, it was just, everybody has their own path and their own passion and what they want to do. And school is not my, normal school is not my, and I just, nothing's <laughs> normal. I, I honestly don't think anything's normal anymore. Everybody yeah. just do what works for you. And I love that you discuss it as a family. I think that that's really beautiful. And it's really cool that obviously your family supports your creative stuff mm -hmm. because your parents are both very creative, which I'm yeah. sure really helped you oh, a along thousand the way. Percent. I mean, like ever like my, you guys, like my team, my family, like have been the most what's I had in my head, like the best support system and the best help and the best guidance through all of this as I could possibly imagine. Like without them, I would not be. I actually strong. believe you. I know a lot of people are like, oh, everybody says that it's, you are a hundred percent. Your life is influenced by the people around you. Oh, for sure. And I feel like you have a very solid community of people Thank and family. You. And oh, even yeah. just like, They're not to sound like a, you know, 92 year old here, but like, you're just like so polite. And when you walked Thank in you. the way you were making oh eye contact and shaking hands, I know I'm just like aging myself out so much, <laughs> but I appreciate that. And you. you would be surprised at how many people who are in your position who are older than you, mm -hmm. but are also social influencers, whatever. They don't have these skills that you clearly, like you can tell you were raised with a good foundation and I'm done. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, like, yeah, like, luckily, like, honestly, I can't even say it's me. It's like the people around, like I've been blessed with the best family ever. Like in Florida, we live, you know, five minutes away from each other and they're just great. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, no, I guess so that. Thank you. So that's great. But it also, obviously you're a very hard worker and very talented. So what has been, cause we like to give inspo to the people that are watching and also your fans. What has been, cause I don't love to always I think that on social media and we see all these successes, we see Forbes articles about you, you're winning Teen Choice Awards left and right. You probably just won one as I said that. No. <laughs> like I just, but there are days that are not Teen Choice Award winning and yeah. Forbes. And I think the problem is that a lot of people look at people like you. I think you're very real. You mm -hmm. break that wall a I lot try. with your yeah. with your fans, which I love about you. you. But what would you say has been the most challenging thing for you on this journey? It really, like like you said, sometimes it's hard to go from those. Like I have, I had to learn how to put everything into their own little boxes and not mix everything together. Because as soon as I, you know, decide my confidence and rely on my confidence based on my Instagram likes, for example, or whether I won that Teen Choice Award or mm -hmm. whether I got on that list, that's when I think everything in my head starts to, my emotional level starts to get all mixed up. Because, well, you're human. Yeah, I'm so human. Okay. And like, you know, I can't, you know, sometimes I'm not going to win that Teen Choice Award and that's okay. It's not me. I'm going to still do me and I'm going to be who I am and I'm going to fight through everything. And just because that picture didn't get as many likes as I wanted it to and I thought it would, that's okay. You mm -hmm. know? And I think that's one thing with this new wave of social media that I've seen a lot of, you know, my supporters and people talk to me about and people just say in general that it is hard to go on social media sometimes. And if you're not, uh, I don't know how to put this. Like, it's not good to find your validation through social media. And, and so many people, other people do now. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, and especially you, somebody who, you know, your social media following is massive on every platform that you decide to log into and start a 
you know, a profile on. <laughs> how do you yourself keep balanced and like not allow that to dictate a day? Like, cause I'm, I've seen comment, people are, can be really mean. Mm -hmm. How do you compartmentalize that in a way? And maybe this is good advice for people who don't have millions of followers like you, but maybe, you know, they get a mean comment or two, or they didn't get as much likes as their best friend did. How, what advice would you give that person about social media and how to compartmentalize that and yeah. not make it so heavy? You truly as hard, like as, I don't know if as hard as this may sound or as easy, you have to learn how to disconnect from your phone because what other people through the screen who don't know you say about you means absolutely nothing. What matters are is your family and the people who love you and the people who you know know you, the people who you love, people who you respect their opinion and they respect your opinion. That's what matters. And what matters is what you want to do in life. You know, I had to learn how to put my phone down sometimes and say, you know what? Is this making me happy right now? No, it's not making me happy right now. I'm going to go outside and I'm going to sing. And I go outside and I sing because that's what makes me happy. You have mm -hmm. to focus on yourself and focus on the people that you love, what you love to do, and um, what makes you happy. I yeah, guess. no, that's really, really good advice. And, and also you specifically have kind of like grown up online yeah. in a sense, like you were really young when you first started musically, you're 14, right? 13, mm -hmm. 14. I was 14. Yeah. That's really, really young. And now you're like entering adulthood, not like totally adult, but you're entering Enter into that yeah. world. Right. How has it been growing up in front of so many people? And like, I know awkward teenage years were weird for me and I didn't have people scrutinizing every move that I make. Mm -hmm. yeah. Is that tough for you? It definitely gets weird because I know, like, I, I don't know. I was thinking about this the other day. It's funny that you say that. Um, I remember, I think sadly, Ariana and Pete broke up, right? And- R.I.P. I know, I was like so sad. I was like, why did they I was really heartbroken. Break up? I was like, why did they break up? <laughs> and then I realized, I'm like, oh my God, you know, why do I care that they broke up? <laughs> like that's their relationship, but that's like a personal thing. And I can't even imagine break a breakup being that like widely, and then everybody's like, got opinions about everybody it. Everybody has an opinion about why would you break up? Why? It's like, no, that if if they weren't online, they would be able to part ways peacefully and that's it. But now it's like on SNL and this whole thing, which I understand obviously, but it is definitely weird. That's what I was trying to like. It, no, it I guess weird. I totally get what you're saying. <laughs> it's weird. And I guess that's an, I had to also learn, you know, how to remind myself that I am who I am. This is who I am. And I need to... I had to learn how to truly love myself before going online because I know if I didn't truly love myself before going online, then I'd look for that validation on social media. Um, and then also learning how to take some things off social media. Like not every breakup has to go online. No, or not I think it, I think it's all about boundaries, honestly. Like yeah. I always say this, and this is not to like go on a tangent, but one of the main reasons when you came in and I was like, we don't do gossip, we just focus on the career and like mm -hmm. what you've got going on. The reason I do that is I come from a TV background where I've done a lot of like celebrity stuff. And I remember one day getting an argument with an executive producer and I'm like, I don't want to talk about their breakup. Like, what's it to us? They're, everyone's yeah. like, but they seem so happy. I'm like, of course they seem happy on a red carpet. <laughs> yeah. Like no one knows when you're fighting at home over something or you're like silent in the car because you got an argument. Exactly. Everyone's happy on a red carpet. Exactly. And also it's none of our business. Like no. let's focus on the movie that they just put out or whatever. I, I feel like there's this weird thing with media where we feel, and not we, cause I took myself out of that, but where there's like an entitlement to, mm -hmm. to personal lives. And I really commend you for putting boundaries on that. Yeah, you have to, or else like, I, I don't, it's- Like you're it, so much more than your personal life. Your personal life is very important obviously, but like yeah. other people, it's not, you know? Yeah, like it's okay. That, like with, if Pete and Ariana broke up, like the fact that I, I can't like I can't even imagine. But I being, get why you were emotional because I yeah, was too. I was so emotional, and then I had to take a step back, and I'm like, wait, why do I why care? Why do I care? Yeah, like because that's their life, and I can't eat like they were engaged. I can't like what happened. Well, and I then, think we're humans, and we're just thinking of breakups for our, yeah. you know, like breakups we've been through <laughs> or whatever. Um, so let's okay. So we talked about your music stuff. You yes. have, you have, we're gonna just like dial back because I, you have these music videos that you put out, but you also have all these 
singles that are coming out yes. and you're in the studio and working, what can your fans expect from you music wise? Music wise, you can expect new songs that are, are like, you know, my last songs, they are very true to me and they're real and they're raw and they're very happy because a lot of a relationship is happy. But sometimes you're not going to be so happy in a relationship. And sometimes you guys are going to hurt each other and get into arguments and you're not going to feel good about yourself some days. And these songs definitely show that side of me and that side of relationships, which I think is very important because not everything is happy, happy, you know? I love that. That's really real. Um, did, were you a part of the writing process? Did you write oh, yeah, these sure. songs? Yeah, yeah. That's amazing. Um, what is the creative process for you when you're writing a song? Oh, it depends. Um, most of the time I'm in my room by myself and I am crying and I want to write everything down on a freaking piece of paper and sing melodies, or I'm in a room uh, with amazing writers and producers and we kind of bounce ideas off of each other. We'll lay different melodies down, lay mm -hmm. different lyrics down and create this song together. <laughs> so mom and dad are obviously very creative. Dad, yes. Dad's in music as well, yes. right? Do you ever take something to them or are you kind of like, wait till it's done and then I'll bring it to you? Cause that can be hard too, right? Yeah, no, they, I'm like, with my parents, I'm the, the second I'm done with the session, they're like, okay, so where's the song? And I have to like, make sure I get this song. <laughs> <laughs> and like, we play it in the car on the way home. Like I sort of, and then like, I write all the lyrics down and I go through each lyric with them. Okay, this is what this means and that. And I wrote that one and that's a good, okay. We like analyze the whole thing. Then we send it to, you know, Aton and Ethan and Jordan and everybody like, okay, like, what do you guys think about this song? And everybody like has their say and it's a whole thing. <laughs> like not even like business wise, just, creative wise like we want to be like okay like we like that we can do a music video like this and my mom and I will sit there for hours looking at other people's music videos and say okay you know for this song let's pull this from this here's good inspiration from there let's put good inspiration from there let's create this here's our idea and I like team everybody's effort. yeah I like everybody's team input effort. I love that. <laughs> do you guys ever disagree on a vision and if you do what do you do for sure <laughs> you know it's funny actually there's a new song that I have coming out that my mom and I have like a very solid music video idea for and I have it in my head. I think we both have it in our head. And when my dad was here and my mom was in Florida with my brother, um, I told him about the idea and he was like, mm, I don't, you know, I don't think that's what I see in my head. I was like, okay, so what do you see in your head, dad? And he, <laughs> said, <laughs> and he said something totally different. I was like, okay, we'll find a way to put that in but right now mom and I have this certain idea so it's you're like you can do the next one yeah. dad <laughs> next song <laughs> you got it okay <laughs> but this one I mean we talked about but luckily honestly like with them we're very open with each other's you know I mean even the way you just described it was the most jolly interaction <laughs> seems like there was no issue it was just like dad it's okay next time and he's like okay <laughs> okay <laughs> He's like, all right. So, I mean, like we just, and honestly, there's a lot of times where we'll have ideas. Like my mom had this amazing, I'm going to talk about your stop motion idea. <laughs> she had this amazing idea. I think it was for my song Gucci on my body. And she had this whole stop motion idea. And we're like, okay, you know what, mom, if we can make this happen, we're going to make it happen. We went to like three different, you know, video production companies and they're all like unfortunately we can't make that happen so my dad and I are like okay so we're gonna have to go we're, but it's I mean it's good we, Stephen know. can make it happen yeah. Stephen can make anything <laughs> happen it was honestly <laughs> like they could make it happen just not in the time frame because like we're like we need it anyways you're like we need it yesterday we talk Stop it motion. out though we're like we all pretty much have the same kind of idea on that's things. great that's really cool that you guys are all on the same page um so music's going really well you have more music coming out that's really really exciting um, but it doesn't just end there. We've got a movie. I know. I'm so excited. <laughs> who, who casually also has a movie coming out? I don't know. I'm so excited. Can you tell us anything about it or like? Yes, I can. Okay. So this movie, I play a girl named Kenzie, Margaret Mackenzie Messina. I think that's the first time I said her full name, Margaret Mackenzie Messina. And um, it's about me and this boy who's played, his name is Xander, who's played by Jace Norman. And Jace, unfortunately, his dad goes missing in the movie. And so he decides to move to his grandpa's house, where the place where his dad grew up, to find his dad. And while he goes to his grandpa's house, he has to enroll in a new school. And in this new school, he meets me. And 
I am a, an investigative reporter at my school. I'm very passionate. So hardcore. Yes, and I'm very aligned, headstrong. I want to align with him, and I want to figure out this mystery. And from there, we just, we go on. <laughs> we so you try to find the, his dad. <laughs> so is it like a mystery, like thriller, trying to figure it out? Does it have a little rom-com in it? it it's definitely. It's, Does a love blossom? It's. I'm not going to say anything yet, okay. but... You don't have to say a thing. I'm, gonna say, I'm not going to say anything yet. It's a mystery with rom-com with... Yeah, rom-com has comedy in it. Okay, so it's... Yes, I think it's mystery, romantic, comedy. How was it on a movie set versus in a studio? Oh, my God, that's so much fun. Like, different worlds, <laughs> by the way. Oh, no, completely how, different How worlds. was that for you? It was the best experience of all my entire life I okay so another thing about my family is that we all are obsessed with movies and so for me like as a, the biggest movie buff ever to be on a movie set was just a dream no matter what it was but also like I mean Jace was amazing the director was amazing the cast and crew was just phenomenal and they made it such a comfortable and easy experience for me because they knew it was like my first movie you know but we all worked together so well um, and it was, it was great. I mean, the sets were gorgeous. I, there's, I have nothing bad to say. About it. <laughs> I'm a little out of breath here because yes. so many things going on, know. <laughs> you know, we've got the music, we've got the acting, but did you guys know she's also an author? Ah, what? <laughs> That's it. Tell us. Yes. So my book dreaming out loud just came out and it is a collection of all of my journal entries and they are separated into the colors of the rainbow. So I start off with love red, for example, and red has all of my journal entries and my stories about love, relationships, crushes, breakups, all that happy, sad kind of stuff. And it goes to like purple, for example, where I talk about self-love and like social media and cyberbullying and getting hate online and how to stay confident in who you are. Um, yeah, so, I mean, I talk about friends in yellow and then green giving back. You know, it's, it's just a ton of my What a real cool concept. Story. Thank you. How did you even come up with that? That's uh, so fluid. It just you. makes so much sense. <laughs> thank you. I mean, it was, it's weird. I've always, like, in my, the way my brain works sometimes is I see different, um, like, emotions as colors. So I was like, okay, like, the only way in my brain, like, the only way that makes sense for me to do my book is to separate it into the colors, which to me are emotions. Like I just, I don't know, like red is happy, I love like that. red is love, you know? And so that's just how I, we did it. The other thing I really love, and I wanted to share this with you, you have all these things going on, but you still connect with your fans on YouTube yes. and your social platforms, which I think is so beautiful. Thank like you you're so not much. too, you know, some people are like, I can't, your fans love you so much. Thank and you. that connection I think is really important. Thank you. So, and yeah, I, I really, I really commend you for all of your hard work. Cause it's not easy going from a music studio set <laughs> to, um, you know, movies to then like being like, hi guys, I'm here on YouTube. I mean, I don't know how you do it, <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> but, um, big things are coming for baby Ariel and yes. we're going to keep track. We hope you enjoyed this. Make sure you guys show her some love on her social. She has like no followers. So it'll be hard to find her. <laughs> um, but it's just baby Ariel everywhere. You get baby Ariel everywhere. You already knew that though. So I don't even know Thank why I wasted you. my time. <laughs> Bye guys. Bye.